Dear students, this is Lakshman Shirol from Tungal School of Basic and Applied Science, Jamkandi. Today, we are going to start a new concept that is geometrical optics. Let us see the syllabus of this geometrical optics. First, we are going to study the source of light and speed of light, optical medium, rectilinear propagation of light law of reflection, laws of refraction, refractive index, optical path and main important concept in this chapter that is Permat's principle of stationary time. Using this Permat principle we are going to derive the law of reflection and derivation of law of refraction and sign conventions of the ray optics and after that we are going to see the one derivation small derivation that is the law of refraction at a spherical refracting surface and a derivation of smith helmholtz equation and lagrange law finally we'll see the abbe's sign rule and after that we'll see the some problems regarding about the abbe's derivations okay to understand the optics the light is essential so here light is agent which stimulates our sense of sight so what is a light here we understand the world around us with the help of information reaching our five sense instruments namely eyes ears nose tongue and skin and here the light is a part of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum and it is a form of energy so this energy we are using as in the form of light so from the this light we are getting the very important thing in optics so what is the optics Optics is a branch of physics which deals with the study of nature of light, its sources and properties, effects and fission. It means that we can study the phenomenon and laws of associated with the generation and the propagation of light and its interaction with the matter. All these things we can study by using the concept of optics and the helpful for the, the geometrical optics as well as physical optics. So here the optics is divided into two parts. One is a geometrical optics, another one is a physical optics so we'll see one by one here what is the geometrical optics we know that the geometrical optics the propagation of light in terms of rays we know that when light is reflected from a mirror the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection this was stated by Euclid in his book and another one of the scientist Alexandria suggested that light traverse the shortest path between two points they were also aware of refraction of light as it passes from one transparent medium to another so what it gives the geometrical optics is aware of this one it is reflection as well as refraction and further the another one of the scientists, John Kepler, discovered the phenomenon of total internal reflection. 
so later the fermat one of the scientist he discovered the principle of least time so according to this principle light always follows the dead path which takes it is to a very shortest time to reach the destiny from one point to another point and later the newton was given the corpuscular theory and this is given by the study of simple facts such as rectilinear propagation of light and law of reflection and law of refraction by the geometrical method and now physical optics physical optics or a view optics is a branch of optics that study the interference diffraction and polarization in the year of 1678 huygens and newton was proposed the theory of light according to this theory light is a energy and supposed to be transferred from one point to another point in the form of waves and later the ang was demonstrated for the first time of interference of light all these things we can study in the physical optics or in the view optics we can call both here and this physical optics is nothing but the dual nature of light why because the light is behaves as a wave as well as a particle nature and now i have given here this is the uh, geometrical optics and physical optics some pictures uh, here it is a blurred that's why i will explain here that is refraction reflection and snell's law is there and next uh, image virtual image and it real, real image focal length and spectral colors and uh, i corona is there so all these things comes under the geometrical optics why because it is explains only how the light rays are traveling through the medium otherwise through in the space okay all it will explains and the physical optics okay in physical optics we can study the interference diffraction polarization soap bubble and it means how the soap bubble is gives the seven colors and uh, di uh, bragg's uh, diffraction is there polaroids scattering all these things comes under the physical optics hmm? okay now we'll go to the source of light what is the source of light source of light is nothing but the all objects to which are visible to us may be regarded as a source of light okay we know everything sun stars bulb candle i have given here lamp bench home mountains wall whatever the visible things are there those are called as a source of light so here there are two types of sources are there one is a luminous source and there is a non luminous source or a luminous bodies non luminous bodies so what are the luminous bodies the which is produces its own light or a which object is produces the own light those are called as a luminous sources example sun and bulb campfire candle okay all these things are the luminous sources and what is the non luminous source which do not produces its own light those type of the sources is called as non luminous sources examples are moon person pencil mountain wall whatever you can take the that 
does not produces which which does not produces the their own light all the uh, all the materials are called as a non luminous sources now speed of light okay, what is the speed of light the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second we know that one but in the year of 1849 the a h l fijo a French physicist give a value of light is 3.13 into 10 to the power of 5 km per second and after that Albert Michelson give a exact value of speed of light that is 2.998 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second in a practical purpose we are using 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second the speed of light in the medium substance is less than that of the vacuum and also what happens here the speed of light is changes when it change the medium okay it depends on the that material or a medium so now optical medium here the optical medium it means if the light wants to propagate from one point to another point the medium is required it means this is a one point and this is a one point and if the light is wants to travel from this point to this point so the medium is required so that medium is nothing but the optical medium okay that whatever it may be it may be water it may be uh, sand otherwise glass otherwise anything huh? if the light is traveling from one point to another point and then the whatever the that uh, path is there that path is nothing but the medium here so there are two types of the physical uh, sorry here it is a optical medium and the first one is a isotropic medium and then one is a anisotropic medium so what is isotropic medium here if the speed of the light throughout it is the same in all direction in all direction okay there are those type of the medium is called as isotropic medium so the speed of light is there that speed of light is does not changes anywhere in throughout the uh, that journey those called as the those type of the medium is called as isotropic medium examples glass water all these things hmm? and the next uh, anisotropic medium is if the speed of the light is different in a different direction so continuously it is going to be changed those type of the materials are called or sorry medium is called as a anisotropic medium and then uh, the examples are mica and then quartz and uh, sunlight etc so next concept is that is a rectilinear propagation of light what is a rectilinear propagation of light it states that in a homogeneous medium light travels along a straight line from one point to another point so what is that from a primary else we are studying the light always travels a straight line it means that straight line is nothing but the rectilinear propagation so the path along which light travels is called as ray of light and which path it is going to be travel that is called as a ray of light and if the number of the rays of lights is moving in a cross sectional area then it is called as a beam of rays or it is a bundle of rays okay beam of rays we can call and so now next concept is that laws of reflection of light so in we know that there are two laws first one is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection it is angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection then second law is that the incident ray the reflected rays and the normal to the mirror at the point of incident all lies in the same plane so i have given here the diagram 
ray diagram this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray so and then this center one is there that is a normal so the ray incident ray is incident on the plane mirror at the point and the from the that point it is going to be reflected back so that is called as a reflection and next what happens where the that incident ray is fall on the mirror that point we have to draw on perpendicular line that perpendicular line is nothing but the normal so here this is a plane this is the plane and next what happens if the incident ray is incident on the that plane mirror is in the same plane and then also reflected ray is also in that plane only and then normal is also lying on that point only so this is gives the second law here and here one more point is there that is the incident ray and the reflected ray lie on either side of the normal so here both are opposite and then here the center one is the normal is there uh, the left side uh, incident ray is there and the next uh, right side is a reflected uh, ray is there here and then this is the incident ray is also creates an angle theta with the that normal and then the uh, reflected ray is also creates an angle theta that is a reflected ray with the that normal okay now we will see the next point that is a refraction of light so what is the refraction the phenomenon of bending of light when it travels from one medium to another medium that is called as a refraction so here let us see the diagram this is the incident ray and then this is the refracted ray what happens here when a ray of light traveling through the transparent medium from one medium to another medium this is given n1 medium n2 medium it means refractive index 1 and refractive index 2 it means that is a medium 1 to medium 2 when it is traveling from one medium to another medium and then the ray of light is transferring from this surface to this surface in that time what happens the bending will take place light is going to be bent so let us see here if there is no any medium in that time the light is passes from this path but due to the that medium it is going to bend towards the that normal so that is called as a refraction and here also for the refraction we are getting the two laws okay one first one is that is the incident ray the normal and the refracted ray all lie in the same plane all lie in the same plane whatever the this incident ray and normal and then refracted ray all are lie in the same plane and then second law is that the ratio of sign of angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction for any two given media is constant this is nothing but the snell's law now we will go to the next concept that is the refractive index so here what is the refractive index the refractive index is nothing but the comparison between the velocity of light one medium to another medium any medium it it, it may be uh, what is the refractive index here the refractive index is defined as the ratio of velocity of light in vacuum to the velocity of light in a medium or a substance at the same wavelength so this refractive index is depends on the color of light traveling through the medium so for example also it depends on density of the medium or a optical density it means a medium with relatively high refractive index is said to be high optical density if the refractive index is high then the optical density is also high if the refractive index is low and the, it means the optical density density is also low and the white light is made up of the light of different colors we know that and every 
color has a every light color has a different refractive index so we can write the refractive index that is mu is equals to c by phi what is a mu mu is a refractive index and then c is a velocity of light in a vacuum velocity of light in a vacuum and then the phi is a velocity of light in a medium so this is gives the refractive index and now we'll see the optical path so if the light wants to be travel from one point to another point then the length path length is also very important here so what is the path length here the path length optical path length is the distance between the two points or a shortest distance between the two points that is called a geometrical path so here the optical distance is the product of the geometrical length of a path followed by the light through a given system and the refractive index of the medium through which it is propagates or the optical path length is also defined as the product of the refractive index and the geometrical path length so here the path length is indicated with the delta sorry del is equals to mu into l so the mu is a refractive index and l is the path length or a geometrical path length so this is the product of the refractive index and the path length is called as optical path so for example if the point of a and then if the point of b so here a and here b is there so then the light is traveling from point a to point b then the whatever the length is there here from a to b that length is nothing but the geometrical path length and then the light is traveling in a medium and which medium and then it is also multiplied with the that path length and then it is gives the optical path length here what happens here sometimes if the reflection is there in that time what happens it is going to be traveling from a to b a to b and <coughs> it travels with a velocity c it travels with a velocity c if the medium is air listen here this is a very important if the medium is a air and with a lesser velocity v if the medium is other than air therefore the light ray takes the more time to go from a to b located in a medium so this is the a point and this is the b point if the light, light is traveling from one point to another point the velocity of light is c the air medium and the another one is there that is a v in other medium so therefore the refractive index is becomes c divided by v refractive index becomes c divided by v so therefore now what is the c c is nothing but the a to b a to b that is a divided by a into b divided by it takes the time to travel from this point to this point that is time t so divided by and what is the velocity of C, uh, light here it is a medium and it is also traveling from here to here that is av divided by capital t will take here huh? the time is required for a to b that is also sorry sorry i will take here this is a capital t and this is a small t okay and then now the refractive index is gives 
this much hmm? so here okay, th therefore now the t we can write t is equals to mu into small t so and later the del divided by capital L so del is for the geometrical path length of the air medium and small l is a geometrical path length for the medium so we can write this is the ct ct means the velocity we can we know that the velocity is equal to distance divided by time hmm? so here i am going to put the value of the distance it means path length for a velocity of light in a air medium that is a c into t divided by a path length is the medium that is a velocity v into t here so this is nothing but the this term is nothing but the mu okay and then delta is equals to mu into l mu into l okay this is the optical path length now is a very important concept is that that is a permats principle so permats principle one of the very important principle the permats in 1658 give a general principle 58 or 57 he given a general principle which states that a ray of light in passing from one point to another point by any number of reflections or refractions chooses a path along which the time taken is least or minimum so it will explains this principle is called as also least principle of least time we will see details about this permats principle in the next class